And we welcome you to our Wednesday morning with our friends from the Extension Center. We have Amy Glenn with us. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How good, about yourself? Good. I'm doing great. Thank you. Been a trying time here lately, but uh, yep. we'll make our way through it. Yes, right? we will. Yes, Unfortunately, we Unfortunately, I know you're thinking about those people in Florida. You came from there. Born and raised in Central Florida. And Never Polk saw County any and... rain or hurricanes or none of that stuff. Well, no? I, I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm being um, facetious, gotcha. obviously. <laughs> yeah, in 2004, we had three or four come right through Polk County. So my heart and my, my thoughts are with everybody in know. Florida. And but hopefully. really, this year has been very quiet in Florida. It has been. It has been. And they're going to pay for um, it now, we right? We were down there a couple weeks ago, and, I mean, every day they had the thunderstorms. That's typical for Florida. That, yeah, that's um, every day. But, you know, when a hurricane comes through and the ground's already saturated, there's going to be lots of trees down and power lines, I'm sure. And so, yeah, I just hope everybody's prepared and hunkered down and ready to ride it out or has evacuated well, to higher ground. So. Hopefully those around the coast area have gotten oh, yeah. out of that way. Yeah. As, uh, we were talking, they're talking in some areas as much as 24 inches of rain. Right. Two feet of rain does not go away no, very fast. No, it does not. I don't no, care if not. you're in Florida or not. Yeah. Uh, it, it will, obviously, with more sand in the, in the soil and things of that nature, but uh, when you, you're underwater, you, the water doesn't go away. Uh, yeah, you know, if, if the if the ocean's high and you've got floods everywhere, where's the water going to go? Right? And I think the I think the worst part for me, having gone through a few of them, is, I mean, you can prepare for a hurricane. They they've had days. Mm -hmm. They knew it was coming. Exactly where it was going to make landfall, they they weren't able to pinpoint sure, until sure. you know the past couple of days. But you know it's coming, so you know you need to get prepared. And it's it's kind of funny when we first moved here. The first snowstorm, I didn't know what to do. We don't, we don't have snow in Florida. <laughs> no, you don't. So I, I didn't know what to do. And a very good friend of mine that um, kind of took me under her wing, she called me and she said, I would be doing a disservice to you if I didn't make sure you were ready. So she started going through, do you have this? Do you have this? I said, so basically it's got like getting ready for a hurricane, except... It's going to be cold instead of 100 degrees and no electricity if we if the power goes out. And she said, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, kind of. I guess so. Kind of that way. So, um, but, but the hard part with the hurricanes is, I mean, a hurricane coming through is definitely uh, um, very hard to deal with. But the tornadoes, because you don't have a warning. No. On, I mean, you, you do, but it's just minutes, you know, to prepare for that. And sometimes if you don't have power and you don't have a radio and you're you're not sure what's going on you have absolutely no right. warning whatsoever so yeah, that's yeah. tornadoes are very hard to judge especially yes. at night you can't see them and they can bounce around like a basketball yes they can and they, they do they can take your house out and skip your neighbors that's and, right they so. jump they hit they hit hills and trees and when they do sometimes it cools them off and they lift up right and then they get another batch of that hot air that's above the lower air and then it comes right back down and yeah and yeah, I it, think can, it where, can be crazy. Yeah, and I think where where I where we were born and raised in Polk County in Central Florida, um, I think it's supposed to be going through like two o'clock in the morning, yeah. and that's terrifying because you can't you can't see, you know. So you're right. kind of just now Central Florida though. Sometimes it even gets tornadoes though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, absolutely. Some people don't think about that in Florida. They don't right. think of hurricanes, but no, there actually can be tornadoes there too. Right. You don't have the drastic change in temperatures. Oh no. Like no. they have here, going mm -hmm. 50 degrees in one day. Uh, usually, uh, usually mm -hmm. your temperature maybe 25 to 30, but it's still a hurricane or a, right. a tornado. It's still a revolution of wind. That's right. That's <laughs> and right. And one thing we were talking about with this one uh, with Ian is it's extremely slow yes. moving. Yes. You know, most of the time when you think of a hurricane, it's going to come through pretty quick, going to get over. It's going to hit. You get through it, and then you're you're done. This mm -hmm. one's going to last two to three days. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. That's it's crazy. crazy. It is so crazy. But keep Florida in your prayers. It is. I, yep. And uh, like I said, I've, I've got friends down in Florida, too, and it's just, you know. And here we are talking and, about the weather, and I was cold this morning. I'm well, sitting here with long bet. sleeves on, it and is. you've got short well, sleeves on. Yeah, but I'm, I'm inside. My short, my short trek is out to my truck. I'm like 25 feet, 25 feet in the station. I, I can handle that cold for that little bit. But you're right. It, it's uh, 
you're not even used to that kind of temperature. No. It takes a long time for your body to adjust to where you are. Right. Um, but be that as it may, you're adjusting just fine. I yeah, am. Very good. I am. But yeah, I can imagine your first snowfall. You oh, know, yeah. And you don't I know had how blast, much that's going to be. Yeah, you're out I there. I had a blast. <laughs> we made the ice cream. We made wine slushies. Go we made do some snow, snow angels. angels. Absolutely. You do that. I was like a kid. Yeah. So yeah, what it was. Is fun. this white stuff? It's not. That's sand. right. That's right. <laughs> It's cold. <laughs> well, Amy uh, does a lot of work with our Den County 4-H, yes. and we know that October is 4-H month. And That's so right. it's almost time to start signing up, isn't it? It is. October 1st, the enrollment reopens. And I have had a couple people call the office and say, I'm trying to enroll, and I can't. Too soon. Um, they shut it down. They shut the system down, I believe it's September 15th, just trying to clear out from the previous year and tweak what they need to tweak for the upcoming year mm -hmm. so don't try to enroll um, until October 1st um, and that's when it reopens and that's when you can get on there and get your kids enrolled the parents can enroll as volunteers we had a huge upswing last year with volunteers um, but that doesn't mean we don't need more absolutely because and there are some of the there are some of the projects that we call countywide projects that may have one or two volunteers mm -hmm. working with all of the kids in Dent County, but the majority of our projects are club based. Sure. So, um, you know, there were some last year that I had to beg them, you know, <laughs> would you please do countywide because I have kids in this club that want to do it, but there's not a project leader. And, and they did, they stepped sure. up to the plate for us. And I mean, it's, it's, it's very difficult telling a, 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 a child, uh, sorry, you can't do that because yeah. we don't have a project. You're leader. in the wrong club. Right. You're yeah. in the wrong club or so, you know, we're never going to turn uh, turn away volunteers. No. So and if, if you huge. if you have a unique skill that you say, well, you know, I don't mm -hmm. think those kids would be interested in it. I, and, and I know I, I bring the story up and people say, your stories are getting old. You've said <laughs> it before. Well, maybe you're a new listener. Um, but years ago there was a gentleman out of west plains that made violins mm -hmm. or better known as fiddles mm -hmm. in our area he made them and he actually taught that class right. on how to actually craft and i mean craft a fiddle mm -hmm. and that's the strings that's the wood it's everything and why that it's cut the way it is to get the sound you want and and that gentleman, I, I don't think he's with us anymore but I, that gentleman came up here and i know he did it for a few classes and I was in. I wasn't there, but I was intrigued that this gentleman would come from West Plains, right, all the way to Dent County to teach this. And when I I did talk to him, but I didn't get a chance to see how he did it. Uh, he said he goes, if somebody's interested in what I can do before mm -hmm. I leave this earth, there's not a lot of us left, right, right. And if some kid, he goes, if one child would pick up and continue to do what I've done, I've passed on my legacy. That's right. That's right. And that's, you know, and hopefully other people feel the same way. Mm -hmm. There are some unique skills. You know, you go to Silver Dollar City and see these people doing this. They're making candles. They're in a live soap. Okay, a lot Ironworks. Of, Ironworks. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have done that. Um, but there's not a lot of people left doing it. That's because right. Because that kind of artistry is kind of gone. That was a necessity back in the day. Now it's an, an artistic piece of craft work. Right. Because... You don't see basket weaving anymore. You don't see the candle making anymore. Mm -hmm. You do, but you don't see it on an everyday basis like right. you used to. And, and sometimes it's things that we take for granted. Um, just, to, just to show you, whenever we went down to, to Florida a couple of weeks ago, up here, now we are in a small community. Mm -hmm. I understand when you see something, for example, at Walmart, if you think you need it, you better go ahead and get it because it might not be there tomorrow. That's right. But during canning season, you can't hardly find jars. No. Now, where so I came Walmart from, in Florida. where I came from in Florida, now that, that's what I love about this mm -hmm. community. They they live off the land. Right. Um, but there's there's a lot of times when it's stuff that they do on the daily that they don't think about that needs to be passed on to sure. our youth. But in, in when we went to Florida, I went down that aisle and there's just like shelves and shelves full of canning jars. And I'm can, thinking, can you, you can't find jars. <laughs> you can't find jars 
in our little community right. very often. Like I said, when when you see them, you better get them. Uh, you should but have taken a truck and load I, it up. And then well, come we back are in. we are this next trip. So <laughs> so if anybody but, needs mean, any jars, let but, me know. But it is true, you need, and a lot of times people uh, don't think about that. Yes. But also when you we were, we were talking before we came on the air. And kind of just what you were kind of talking about with snow, mm -hmm. uh, when you get your first snowfall, you're trapped inside. Well, if you're not country born and raised to where maybe with the range you might be locked in because mm -hmm. of the low water crossings, you may not be getting out for a couple of days. With the snows, you may not be getting out for a week. Mm -hmm. you, you should have canned something because Absolutely. you should know this mm -hmm. could happen this winter mm -hmm. and have it handy just in case now That's you can right. always go open up that can and eat it any time you know whatever you did tomatoes it could be made pickles or whatever it is you got on hand mm -hmm. but boy if you don't and you see the grocery stores when they start talking storms they clear out in a heartbeat but right. if you've got your own it's even better yep they always run out of water bread and milk <laughs> i don't <laughs> can't yeah, find the stuff imagine. but you know like i said it's stuff that um some of the people in this community, like I said, may take for granted because they do it every day. They right. they forage, they you know all the mushrooms and all this kind of stuff, and hopefully the kids are paying attention. But you know it's the things that we take for granted that need to be passed on. You're right. So, so now let's talk a little bit about the registration. If your child has already been in 4-H and you're registering. That information is still there, right? That information is still there. There is one thing that I need to ask of those that have are, are, are uh, former 4-H members. When you go to the project area so that you can tell us what your child is going to be doing this year, what projects they're going to be working on, we need you to clear out what's in there already. I see. Because whenever I... Um, I think it's around January, I let the club leaders know what their members have enrolled in. So if you're leaving your old projects on there, you're showing up on those lists as, as well. well. Okay. So for example, somebody may be um, signed up for cake decorating three, but they're also, I mean, the year before they did cake decorating two, two. and then the year before. So they're going to show up on all three, all three lists. I get it. So if, they, if you can clear out all the projects that are there already and just put in what your, your child's going to be working on this year, that will help me tremendously. Okay. Um, so. If you're a new member, right. of course, there won't be anything there. <laughs> you're starting so you'll from have, scratch. You're starting from scratch. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, just start from the top and work your way down. I'm very good. Yes. And if you have any questions, please call you Absolutely. at the, at the office. Absolutely. Because don't, and, and I know some people are not computer savvy. They're not computer literate. I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's times that... You know, I use computers every single day, and there's times I look at things and I say, what are you even asking for? Right, right. You know? And, you know, I've had some that are having Internet issues, and mm -hmm. I don't have a problem at all. Um, if they want to come in the office, set a time to come in the office, and we'll sit there and do it together. There you go. Um, so there's two different types of enrollments. There's enrollments for our youth, mm -hmm. and then there are enrollments as a volunteer. Right. So if you are enrolling as a volunteer, um, used to there's a form that they would have to come into the office and fill out and sign right. and all that for I their background that. check. That's all done online now through the same system. Um, there's also a volunteer training. Um, they, can, they can click on trainings and click on volunteer training, and it's all online. You don't have to, I mean, it's all done through 4-H mm -hmm. online. So there's no extra form that you have to fill out. We're trying to get away from us having that kind of personal information in our office because you have to put your social and sure. all that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. And we don't need all that in our office. So everything is done online now. So if there's any problems at all, like I said, you can give me a call at the office and we'll set up a time and you can come in and... We'll sit right there and get it taken care of. Right. And, and if you do get interrupted, uh, because you never know, electric blinks a little bit, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden your computer says, I actually was doing this when I was doing my Medicare res res uh -oh. reservation. It My computer locked up. Uh -oh. Is it there? Is it not there? And you got to reboot. you got to come out of it. Right. You don't have any clue. Well, mm -hmm. fortunately, I learned a long time ago, you just keep saving as you go through, right? Right, right. Well, sometimes you get started, you start typing things in. You don't even realize the computer's locked up. You mm -hmm. just keep 
doing what you're doing. And then you look back and it's, when did that happen? Yeah. You know, <laughs> so uh, if you do have some issues like that, they can contact you and you can check and see how far that application right. is right. or if it never got in at all. Right. And then you can say, no, nope, you need to start again or no, you're halfway through and you know, if uh, you want to come in, we can finish it here or whatever you need to do, right. uh, trying to get it done. So very important, October 1, That's October right. 1. Uh, you can start That's signing Saturday, up. Isn't it? it is. It is Saturday. My gosh, yep. it's going to be here already. Yes, it is. It is here very, very quickly. And one thing, one of, uh, when they start thinking about camps and things of that nature, you also do that online, don't you? Yes, yes. Any any event, um, contest, anything like that, they would do that all online. And what I would like to do this year is, especially for the new members, is to set up a time. Um, that we can all get together and then I can show them what all is on 4-H online and where they have to go to register for this and register for that. And so lots right. on the plate that I want lots to do. Lots on the plate. I get it. Right. Very good. Okay. What else do we have? Um, Eric Muche, mm -hmm. who is our livestock specialist, yes. he wanted me to announce, and unfortunately there's not a flyer or anything. Um, so they are having a field day out at Word Act on october 7th he thinks they're going to get started around nine o'clock <laughs> <laughs> it's open okay. to the public um, this is where the public gets to tour and see everything that's out there <clears throat> there's no cost lunch will be provided no registration you just show up oh okay so that's October the seventh. Open field day yes, over there in Woodag. Yes. Very good. Yes. Very good. Okay. That's an amazing well, place. I went out there and they gave us a tour and it's it's I just want cool. to move out there. If you didn't know it was here, you would be <laughs> Right. You know, like, it's off what? the beaten path. Well, it's just for a sure. farm. Yep. <laughs> no, not really. All right, very good. Well, uh, what else do you have on the agenda for today, Amy? Um, let's see, we talked about enrollments for volunteers and members. The only other thing I have is, oh, very important here. Mm -hmm. okay. Almost almost it's at almost the bottom forgot. of the stack. Almost forgot. We need to recognize some of our 4-H members um, okay. because our shooting sports. Oh, I know. Those guys are just blowing it out of the water. So I posted this on our Facebook page, but I thought this would be a good opportunity. I think to, we were waiting for results from St. Louis. Did they ever come through? For, for some of the shooting sports, for some of that was going on, they were waiting on this final. past weekend. There was okay. some states, so yeah. I I, okay. I have some of that. All right, very good. So our skeet <clears throat> senior doubles, Clayton Hedrick placed second overall with a score of 93. Riker Major had a score of 65, and Cash Howard had a score of 62. The Dent County team, which was Clayton Hedrick, Riker Major, and Cash Howard, they placed fourth. Wow. That's good stuff. In senior double shotgun, Clayton Hedrick placed fifth overall with a score of 84. Riker Major had a score of 64, and Cash Howard had a score of 46. In the Skeet senior singles, Clayton Hedrick placed seventh overall with a score of 90, and Riker Major placed eighth overall with a score of 89. And the three boys together as a team placed second. Senior single shotgun, Clayton Hedrick um, had a score of 93, Riker Major a score of 89, and Cash Howard a score of 76. Um, now Clayton Hedrick is a member of our Lake Spring 4-H. Right. Riker Major and Cash Howard are both members of Spring Creek 4-H. And then I found out that I believe it was last weekend, um, we have some additional congratulations for Clayton Hedrick, Cash Howard, and Riker Major on their first place win in the 2022 State Sporting Clays Senior Team. Clayton also took high individual senior shooter, which is a cumulative score out of all five events of the state shotgun competition. So Dent County is super proud of these boys for their accomplishments and I think some of them um, are also FFA members and yes, they yeah. have oh I should have wrote that down <laughs> they have some type of shooting team 
and some of these mm-hmm. boys are on that team as well. So these boys are, are really representing Dent County very well, That's and fantastic. I think they need to be recognized That's for that. That's fantastic. So, yes, it and is. And to their parents. Absolutely. And, and to their instructors. That's because right. Because without them. They may not get those scores. That's right. That's right. And that's why our volunteers are so important because that's what all of these projects are, you know, they're overseen by the volunteers. So if anybody wants to get involved in any of this, enroll on October 1st. There you go. Very good. The only other thing that I have is um, the dates for our 2023 Expo. We've already got those on the calendar. All right. I know. And those dates are. Those dates are. um, Expo itself will be the week of July 11th. Prior to that, we've got some weigh-ins. And if you are going to be participating, your club leader will have all of this. Your project leaders will have all of this. But very quickly, um, our steer weigh-in is February 25th. Um, Quality assurance um, meeting is February 28th. Hog weigh-in is March 25th. Goat and lamb weigh-in is April 29th. Our market meeting where we go over all of the rules, give you your registration forms Mm -hmm. and all of that, is scheduled for June 15th. And then the entry forms will be due on June 23rd. So, again, the, the expo itself is the week of July 11th. And, and that be comes on the newsletter. If they, yes, if it was in the board. September okay. newsletter. Um, and we don't put these on our website simply because it's kind of a pain. <laughs> I know that's awful to say, but, yeah. um, but we do have these in our office. They are emailed out to all of our members. Right. And we, we'll put these in every newsletter so that everybody... We'll see it monthly. So Good when you get your emails with the newsletter, please open them. Please read them. Please write the dates on your calendar so you don't miss anything. Uh, absolutely, yep. absolutely. And if you have any questions, please call the Den County Extension Office. Right. And, and what days are you there? Um, normally. All right. Okay. On, <laughs> normally, on a regular basis. On a regular yeah. basis, we've had some some changes right. in our office. So um, we do have we do have a voicemail. So if you don't get a a real person just leave a voicemail and we'll get to you but normally we are there monday through friday 8 to 4 30. there you go yep. all right very good 729-3196 still a number that's it no big no hard no hard feelings there you can give nope. them a call that's right and you can also email them and yes. you have an email you want to go ahead and give that out my email is amy glenn and that's all together a m y g l e n n at missouri.edu very good. Very simple. Yes. Name. And if you if there is Missouri.edu. <laughs> right. If there are any questions, not just 4-H related. I mean, if there are livestock questions or sure. pond questions or classes or questions about um, workshops or anything coming up, email me. If you can't remember anybody else's email, just email me and I'll get it to who it needs to go the to. The right person. The right person. The right person. That's right. Amy, as always, pleasure to have you in. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming in. Our friends from the Extension, we really thank them for continuing to uh, provide us with uh, some great insight to a number of different things going on in our our community. A lot of times we don't see them, Mm -hmm. and a lot of times the the kids are busy with them and you don't see them either, but uh, it really is wonderful, and I think it all comes kind of to a head when the expo happens i think right. everybody gets a chance to see that but it's all year long That's it doesn't right. stop it's, it mm-hmm. just keeps going and i really want to put out one last thing to all of our our 4-h leaders who run the different clubs and who are involved in those different clubs without them amy none of this happens none of it would work that's right yeah we've got a great group out there and yes, i'm telling you what they they have exemplified the perfect way of how important it is to mm-hmm. educate children the right way. Mm-hmm. Not Some just, of, we've got a couple of them that have been doing this for many years. Oh, yeah. So, yes. Longer than I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. You know, but they've been around. And, yeah, and without them, it, it doesn't happen. And, right. and, of course, without the parents who probably went through 4-H, most of them already have in their lifetime, mm-hmm. one or the other. And they want their child to go through that and experience what they did. And that's I right. think that's fantastic. And this is what I used to tell my, you know, as a former ag teacher in Florida, I was an FFA advisor. And I used to tell all the parents, we're trying to keep the kids out of trouble, keeping them busy and keeping them out of trouble. So That's what you have to do, really. That's right. you got to keep them busy. Right. Any more with phones and, and oh. know, video games. Hard to get them going, get right. them up, and get them right. moving. We want to thank you, Amy, for coming in. Thank you. For and having don't forget me. every 
basically every last Wednesday, which is usually the fourth Wednesday of the month, we have someone from the extension here, and we really thank them for continuing to do that and provide you with that extra information you might need. Again, if you have any questions, 729-3196. You have a great rest of the day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We got AP News and then statewide news coming up, and our friends from the Salem Memorial District Hospital be in. We're talking about mammograms. Breast Cancer Awareness Week is our month is next month, and so we want to tell you about those and much more right here on KSMO AM 1340 FM 95.7.